Hey physics friends, today we're going to talk about, in this video, how do I send a ray through a curved lens? In the last two videos, we looked at how do you send a ray through um, a rectangular prism and a triangular prism. But how do I deal with something that's got a curve to it? And this is a convex. Its actual name is plano convex because you have a planar line here and it's convex. It could be double convex. Then you have a line here and you have a line here. It could be, um, there's another one, uh, convexo concave. It, just some crazy words for all this stuff. So um, I'm going to talk to you about how do I send this line through here. And this is the line I think I'm going to have you guys do. So I'm going to do an example one that's similar to it but not exactly like it. So I'm going to I'm going to put my line over here. We'll go like this. So here will be my incident line. How do I send it through? So again, the first thing that you're going to have to do is draw your normal. So take out your compass, open it to any span, put the pointy part on the intersection and draw two arcs. Then open your compass up a little further. Draw those two arcs. And then we're going to construct our normal. So here's our normal. And so here's going to be theta 1. Now remember theta 1, again, the biggest mistake I always see and I see it time and time again, and I'll see it on the test, I guarantee it. Theta 1 is on the upper side of the normal. Theta 2 is going to be on the, on the opposite side. They're always on opposite sides of the normal. And I'll even draw that in before I do any work to remind myself later, I have to do it on that side of the normal. So here we go. I'm going to run it through Snell's Law. So I'm going to have to measure my angle here. Looks like it's 43.0 degrees. So it's going from air it's going into my lens. So I pull up my calculator to find theta 2. So I take the sine of 43 now remember, your calculator always has to be in um, degree mode for this to work. And then I'm going to take divided by 1.49 and take the inverse sine of that. And it comes out to 27.2 degrees. So again, remember, 27.2 degrees on this side of my normal. So I'll put my protractor up here, 25, 26, 27.2. twisting my pencil as I draw it. So there it is. It's gone through and now I need, I've reached a, a boundary. I'm going to have to run it through Snell's Law again. But in order to do that I have to make my normal again. Take my compass, make a line on this side, make a line on that side, open my compass nice and wide, make a little arc up here, got an arc up here, and I can draw in my normal. Okay, um, now Snell's Law. It's going from the block. Again, watch out. You put a 1.49 here. It's going into theta 1. It's going to be this. Here's theta 1, this angle turns out that it is 15, 16.1 degrees. It's going into air. So I solve this. 1.49 times the sine of 16.1. 
Uh, I take the inverse sine of it. It comes out to 24.4 degrees. So again, it's on this side of the normal. So 24.4 degrees puts me right there. Boom. And there it is. All curved mirrors are kind of the same. You just make that normal using your compass, find theta 1, run it through Snell's law, find theta 2, make sure that you're always going on the opposite side of the normal when you do that. That's the one mistake I see people doing, that theta 1's above it, that means that theta 2 is on this side of it. Here's my normal, theta 1's on this side, theta 2 has to be on that side of it. And that, that's about it. It's, it's pretty much the exact same method as going through a rectangular or triangular prism. Good luck!